myself, Vincent Chavillat, uh, and Geraldine Morin uh, from University of Toulouse, France, and uh, we have been um, uh, carefully uh, working on this session uh, since 3D um, systems and uh, content are, I think, becoming mark of uh, our community as well, and it's really, for me, great to see that uh, as I'm working in this area now for almost uh, 10 years. So, um, uh, I want to give you a little bit of a background on this session. Um, uh, for this special session, we um, uh, have seen nine papers uh, uh, and selected three papers uh, in this uh, space. Um, uh, the submission was very good, so that was very difficult to actually decide on um, uh, the, the top three uh, su submissions and acceptance. Uh, the papers have been very diverse, um, and this is actually also very good to see. Uh, the papers ranged from uh, 3D content, 3D model, textual meshes, to applications and systems, to acquire 3D, to uh, compress, transmit, display uh, 3D uh, uh, content. So this is definitely um, very good to see. Um, and um, uh, the three accepted papers, as you will see, uh, I think are very clearly uh, manifesting the diversity of uh, our community to uh, tackle the 3D content problems, uh, uh, as we also have heard yesterday at the keynote speech. Uh, um, uh, the particular okay. 3D session had also special uh, program committee, all the experts that are working in uh, 3D, so we felt that the reviews uh, had been um, conducted very professionally. So um, we had three papers, um, uh, and we will start with uh, uh, our first uh, paper, more on the mobile uh, 3D space, uh, continuing with uh, that particular uh, work has been done at Simon Fraser, and I will introduce then uh, Professor Peters more in detail, but uh, this I want to give you the three papers uh, overview so mobile uh, 3D, then actually we are going to talk about uh, work have done at the University of Mannheim on uh, silence detection for stereoscopic videos, and we will uh, finish with a uh, paper on uh, teleimmersive systems uh, 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 based on live captured uh, mesh geometry that has been done at CWI and University of London. Um, and um, basically, just to let you know, I thought that the best uh, paper in our session uh, has been uh, on the 3D teleimmersive systems based on live captured mesh geometry. That was, I think, uh, uh, sort of has some really very neat uh, features that uh, the TPC and the chairs agreed on. But uh, the others have had very interesting aspects as well, and so I hope you will enjoy uh, the special session that uh, um, uh, Geraldine, Vincent, and I put uh, together. So um, uh, then, uh, without any more delay, I would like to introduce our first speaker, uh, is uh, Professor Joseph Peters from Simon Fraser University, who is presenting the work of his uh, graduate student, Mohammed Hassan, and his collaborator, Sherwin Shermahamadi, uh, from University of Ottawa. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this is um, a pilot study that uh, we did for the uh, master's thesis of uh, First author, Mohammed Hosseini. I'm his supervisor, um, Shirvin Shirmohamadi from University of Ottawa. He is his co supervisor. And as I said, this is a pilot study. At the end of the talk, I'll talk a little bit about what we've done since we submitted this paper and what we are continuing to look at. So, um, the, um, the idea here was to uh, try to reduce the uh, energy consumption um, when playing games, online games. And uh, in particular, mobile devices um, have very small batteries. We all know this problem. Um, the uh, energy demands for video, 3D video streaming, and so on are increasing much faster than the battery technology. It's not keeping up with it. So we have to, we can't just depend on technology to solve these problems. Um, 3D games are becoming quite popular, and the uh, textures for 3D are very bulky. So uh, this all says that we have higher energy demands um, and uh, part of the energy demands is the wireless circuits just to receive the information. And uh, this is uh, a significant fraction of the energy. This is where we're concentrating. 
Um, our goals were to uh, increase the battery life by uh, decreasing the energy used to uh, wirelessly transmit the textures. And we wanted, uh, within that, we wanted to maximize the quality of the textures. And we did this by within a specified energy budget. So uh, we'll, I'll explain that a little bit more in detail. So um, our, our general approach was that the textures will be uh, assigned importance values. Um, and we uh, consider the quality of the texture to be a function of its importance value and its size. So for example, the avatar and the enemy are more important than the, the grass and the trees. So we'll assign them uh, importance values. Also, uh, we figured that um, a texture that is on an object, we'll apply textures to objects that are in the foreground, um, are, are going to be more important. And they're going to be bigger than ones in the background. So we also use size as part of the measure of the quality. So uh, the quality is um, importance in size. And our technique is to selectively reduce the sizes of some of the textures to reduce the cost to stream it. And uh, finally, we're going to send the more important textures at a higher resolution and the less important ones at a lower resolution to try to get the average quality of, of experience higher. And um, our results, these are, as I said, this is a pilot study. Our initial results suggest that adaptive streaming like this results in better quality than non-adaptive streaming. And um, also, if we do priority-based streaming, in, in which uh, we try to stream the, the most important textures first, uh, we get better quality than non-priority. So this is the uh, a general overview of the system. We won't look at all of it in this talk. We'll be concentrating on a few parts. It's a client-server model. Um, the uh, server is uh, receives uh, a budget from the client. Client says, I have this much battery power, and this is, this is how much you have to work with. And the server is going to translate that into um, uh, an amount of data it can download. So it's going to um, produce a download budget. Uh, it's, it'll have a database of the textures we want to stream for this game, um, classify them. Um, I'll talk about our heuristic algorithm that we use to select which textures to compress and by how much. And uh, we do the compression. Very, it's a very simple compression. Um, producing the textures, uh, we serialize it, stream it, and the client receives that, um, deserializes it, buffers it, renders it, and, and it's a progressive streaming system. That we did. So the talk is going to concentrate um, mainly on the heuristic algorithm and, and in this area here. So um, these, these are screenshots. We're, we're talking about like cell phones. So they're not going to look like uh, some of the quality that you see in some of the other talks here. Uh, but this, these are actual live screenshots of the demo. Um, you can see that uh, as we progress here, we're getting more and more of the objects with their textures applied. And, and these are pretty, yeah, they don't look so great on the big screen. They look fine on a, on a phone, though. So, um, okay, so we'll, we'll concentrate on um, the algorithm, how we classify them, and uh, the results. Okay, so this is our system set up. Um, the uh, user sends an energy budget to the server, and the server is going to use a linear model to estimate how much data it can transmit. So um, E sub E, this is the uh, energy to establish the initial connection, turn on the circuits, lock on to the, the signal, and so on. Uh, this is the cost per megabyte of data in terms of battery power. Uh, this is the number of megabytes that we need to send. And um, the server is going to use this budget to guide decisions about what to send and how to compress it. Um, this is, we weren't um, trying to model the energy. Uh, Explicitly, we, we use models that we found in the literature. This is one example that's basically showing uh, a, a, an essentially linear relationship between the energy consumption and the amount of data you transmit. It's not exactly linear, but we um, actually measured this on the device and tested the, the hypothesis. 
and it looks pretty linear. We'll see that a little later. Um, now, the first approach that we could take is texture selection. Um, this is where we have a set of textures. Uh, we're, we're going to stream all the objects, and then we will stream. We want to stream the textures, apply them to the objects, and the textures are mul much bulkier than the objects, so that's where we're going to concentrate our efforts. So uh, we have textures, we have a download budget that uh, is too small for all the textures, otherwise there's no problem. Uh, one approach would be to select a subset of the textures and stream them, and, and this is going to give us a zero one knapsack problem. Texture has a size that it uh, costs to stream it, and a value, and we want to find the subset that um, fits within the budget and maximizes the value of what's streamed. It's a zero one knapsack problem. It's, um, of course, well known to be an NP-hard problem. It's also very well studied. There are very good approximation algorithms for it. So it's quite feasible to do this online with a fair bit of accuracy, but it results in a not very good gaming experience. <laughs> so this is, this is what happens when you do texture selection within a budget. Uh, this, by comparison, is the full streaming with no budget restrictions. Okay, so that's not a fair comparison, um, uh, but this is. This is, this is the texture selection. This is uh, um, our technique where we compress them. This does fit within the budget. Okay, and it's, um, I'll come back to this. Um, so our, our approach then was to use texture compression. We want to send all the textures, compress them to fit within the download budget. Of course, it reduces the quality, but um, this uh, is way better than this. And just, uh, just to show a comparison, uh, this is our uh, uh, compression. Oh, you can't even really see much difference here. I guess if you look at these pillars here, you can see that this, this one here, which is the full streaming, is uh, higher resolution than here. Uh, similarly, if you look at this, uh, it's uh, better than this one here, which is compressed. On a screen, you can't see too much difference, but it's there. Okay, so uh, reducing the resolution, um, textures we're assuming are, uh, the resolutions are powers of two. Um, and we used a very simple approach here. Um, our keynote speaker talked about different compression methods, and uh, I think that our t techniques apply to different compression methods as well. That wasn't really what we were looking at. We were looking at power, so we used something really simple, which is just a downsampling approach. We replaced each block of texels by a representative textile, which could be a single one or an average or just an approximation. And depending how much we reduced it, we get a reduction. It's a um, power of four reduction. So. so for example, if we took a 512 by 512 um, bits per inch texture and reduced it to 64 by 64, then we're looking at 8 by 8 blocks. I would be 3 in this case. And this is what it looks like. Um, these are 512 by 512, um, and this is the same t texture applied to a column. Uh, this is 64 by 64. And um, this is a, a little bit more uh, of an example. This is 512 by 512. Um, this one is uh, 256 by 256. This is 64 by 64, and this is with nothing applied. Um, obvious, there's a very obvious difference between this and this, but there's an even worse difference between this and this. this given a choice between this and this, it's obvious. So um, th this is what we're trying to do. So um, uh, just by comparison, uh, there are more sophisticated techniques, of course. Uh, they produce better quality in general, also more overhead, both, well, we don't care too much at the server, but the client is going to have to decompress it, and that takes energy. So um, here is an example of um, the left uh, is downsampling our, our approach, just taking a representative texel. And uh, this is by cubic. Um, this is a 256 by 256. This is 128 by 128. Uh, the differences are 
noticeable. This one is a little grainier. Um, but uh, it's, it's a pretty good approximation, we think. Uh, these are, we also ran some tests of how much execution time it took to actually do this with bicubic, bilinear, and this is just our uh, sampling approach, our downsampling. So it uses a lot less execution time. There's a reduction in quality. Um, there's room for further work here, for sure. Our problem statement. Um, we have, uh, we started with two classes of textures. They're just more important ones, less important ones. So these are the, uh, the avatar and the enemy and so on. Um, so we have two lists of textures and um, we uh, assign a relative value to the textures. So the, the textures in class one are considered to have relative value V1. Um, class two would have V2, which is less than V1. Um, S1 is the total size of these textures. S2 is the total size of these. And S is the total of all of them. So we have this scenario, um, the textures here in arbitrary order in class one and class two, they have different sizes, total size S1 here, S2, and so on. So this is, this is our job. We want to stream all the objects, and this leaves us with a budget, budget of W remaining to, for the textures. This is where we'll concentrate. Um, we have a relative value. Um, the user is going to specify um, a maximum acceptable reduction. So, in other words, minimum quality below this is just too grainy and they don't want it. So we actually have two constraints, and so now this, th we can state the problem um, as streaming all the textures within the budget and without violating the quality constraint. And of course... Mm -hmm. Could you explain how the user specifies the maximum acceptable reduction of uh, resolution? Yeah, they'll just specify what the value of I is. You know, how, how many times for? Nothing four. about no value of I. They know about killing each other in the scanners, right? Yes, so that's right. So, but, but have they actually done this, or this is what they could potentially do if the system were deployed? If the system's deployed, yeah. This is just, just a pilot study, yeah. So this is a parameter that the user can adjust. If the user doesn't adjust it, then the game designer would. Yes. So, somebody needs to specify it. Okay, so our algorithm is um, the user supplies energy budget, budget quality constraint. Uh, we calculate these values. Um, we take the energy budget and size of the textures and use that to calculate download budget. And we're going to end up with four cases. Um, the first is that, uh, well, I will look at these in detail. But there are four cases depending on the relative values of these parameters. So the first case is that the total size is less than the budget. So here's the budget. Um, we just stream everything in full resolution. There's nothing to do here. Um, the second case here is that even if we take all the textures and um, compress them by the maximum acceptable amount, we still can't fit in the budget. So here's, uh, here's how much space we, w the minimum space we could use that's acceptable. The budget is sufficient. No, well, we can't solve the problem at all. So. The two interesting cases are three and four. Uh, this is um, where um, we, if we compress all the textures, less important textures by the maximum amount, um, and we don't compress the first ones at all, we still fit within the budget. So in that case here, uh, we have enough budget to stream all of these at full resolution, and we have um, enough budget left over, so this is the uh, re remaining budget, to uh, stream these. And then what we're going to do is look at these textures and stream them at the maximum quality that we can within this remaining budget. Uh, case four is, is uh, similar. In this case, the, um, the budget is, even if we compress all of these at the maximum amount, so they would take up this much space, S2 over R max. Um, we don't have enough budget to do that and do these at full resolution. So we'll compress these the maximum amount, and then we'll start uh, compressing these, but compress them the smallest amount possible to fit within the remaining budget. So we have to compress the blue ones to fit within here. So those are the two um, 
interesting cases. The algorithm for the first one is um, we calculate the um, minimum amount that we have to compress that we could actually send them all. We compress the first one by that amount, downsample it by that amount, send it. It takes a certain amount of size. Um, we take that out of the budget and then we calculate a new value for the remaining textures, send it. So it's adapting as much as it can. Uh, we repeat that. Case four is very similar, but for the textures in, in the uh, first class. Um, our experimental setup was uh, um, a toy game. It's not a real game. It's just uh, basically a bunch of textures. <laughs> but um, it was, oops, it's a 3D uh, self-runner game. We used progressive streaming. Uh, we had 97 different textures uh, divided this way between important and less important. Uh, we used a pretty much a standard desktop as the server. Uh, running an HTTP media server. Um, our client was um, a, a smartphone with a 3D screen. I don't know if you've seen these. They're, they're pretty neat. You don't need glasses to watch it in 3D. So uh, we streamed them to this, this uh, device. Uh, we uh, actually have an instrumented this machine now. Um, we took the battery out, um, used a 3D photocopier to produce a plastic plug and a cradle and then um, sampled the voltage and current between the battery and the device but wasn't ready in time for this so um, that's future work uh, what what we did was we just used power tutor uh, it's a profiler that runs on this android machine and it just reads the built-in voltage sensors so that was our setup uh, our experiments, we um, had a, a budget. Um, we tried setting the available budget to being 10%, 20%, 30%, and so on of the total size of what we wanted to stream to get sample points. Uh, these are the user-specified maximum values. We tried two different ones. Um, we tried streaming the textures just in arbitrary order. And then we also looked at what happens if we sort them uh, by size within each class. So it's a kind of a primitive kind of priority streaming. And we, of course, did multiple repetitions to make sure that... Uh, uh, this was the uh, result of measuring the energy consumption. Um, so this is 10, 20, and so on. Percent of the uh, total size was the available budget. And this is the actual measured energy for the four different types of experiments. Um, where uh, the um, user specified quality was either 16 or 64 and we either just did them in arbitrary order or we sorted them by size. Um, the trend line here is actually for the red one, the uh, sorted with uh, 16, but they're all, it's basically linear. So it's, it's not such a bad approximation of, of energy. This is what we used. Um, these are the uh, results we got, the average compression, um, the, uh, the dotted ones are for just in arbitrary order, and these solid ones are if we sorted them, so a type of priority order. Um, these, this is how much we ended up compressing the important textures, and th the purple one is the unimportant ones, uh, similarly uh, these are the important ones and the unimportant when it's unsorted. So you can see that it's preferentially uh, compressing the un unimportant ones first. And then later, um, this is with the, uh, the different um, value here. Um, in this case, the unimportant ones have been compressed a lot more. The scale here is different. Um, but again, you can see that it's, it's preferentially compressing the less important ones. The, um, uh, in this case in particular, um, we're, s we're really saving a lot of energy and, and devoting it to the more important textures. So there's almost no compression here at all. It, it's all going up into here. Uh, certainly the, the sorting or the priority streaming helps. Um, we can see by comparing uh, this curve to this one this one to this one, it consistently is better to do that. 
Um, now, just to check uh, the, the influence of the value on this, we um, assigned relative, different relative values, and we um, measured the value of the stream this way. Uh, let's say that this is the size of the compressed textures. So this is what we actually stream uh, from class one and from class two. And we will um, assess the value of the scene as being uh, the weighted average, and then it's normalized. So we'll call this the value. This is what we're trying to maximize. Uh, we set V2 to one in all cases just to normalize the results. And we tried three different values to see what happens as this ratio increases. And, and this is what happens. So these are the four different classes of experiments uh, with uh, sorted, uh, sorry, unsorted and sorted, left and right, uh, the 16 and 64, top to bottom. And then the, uh, the blue is the one to one, red is two to one, and this was green, whatever that color is, uh, is three to one. Um, so we can see, and this is the, uh, the available budget, 10% up to 100%. So um, certainly um, what's happening here is the value, we're getting more value uh, with the, the higher ratio. Everything here is normalized, you can see. So um, we're getting really the, the, the most increase in around 30 to 50 percent. This is where it seems to matter the most. Uh, down here, we're just barely able to send the textures within the budget. So there's not much the algorithm can do. Up here, there's almost no constraints. You can send almost everything. So it seems that between 30 and 50 percent, we're getting our best results. Um, it's consistent in the four experiments. The, um, the interesting thing here is that uh, the, the biggest jump was from one to two. I expect uh, when we go from two to one to three to one, it, it didn't improve a lot. And I think that if we went up to four to one, we wouldn't really see very much difference at all. So it's in this range. We probably should, in the future, uh, fine tune this and look at in that range uh, ratios. Um, this is the value per unit of energy, which is maybe a more valid measure of, of what. This is how much value we got per um, joule of energy. And um, again, uh, of course, as the value ratio increases, we're going to see the curve go up. Um, but these curves look very different. Uh, we got um, a lot of, um, uh, we got good results around 30 to 40% here. This is where the algorithm, this seems to be the sweet spot for the algorithm for this particular set of data. And we, we need to look at more data, really, to, to examine this. But it was very, we were very interested to see that this actually goes down. The algorithm is less effective here when the constraints are easier, and also down here where it can't do very much. So um, th it's an interesting uh, place uh, that we, we can do some more research. Um, let me conclude by saying that uh, this, this pilot study indicates that this, uh, we can improve the quality within a fixed budget. And uh, the approach really didn't depend on the compression method. We could use other compression methods. Um, the models would be different, but uh, it should work. Um, also, different wireless technologies should work here. We, uh, we used WiMAX, but it, it, doesn't, it wasn't really dependent on that. You would get a different energy model it might not be linear. So we would need to know the energy model. Uh, what we're currently doing now is uh, looking at um, increasing the number of classes from two, which is the minimum you could have. Also, a finer grained look at the value factors. Um, the, uh, there, there are a couple of things that are really, uh, uh, we think are very interesting. One is looking at priority based streaming where the energy estimates are kind of approximate. So you have to adjust as you go to them. So you compress it if you're using a more sophisticated compression method. At the, at the uh, client side, you're going to have to decompress it. It's going to take energy to do that. So uh, what's the relationship there? Um, the, uh, the, so the estimate here isn't linear anymore. It's approximate. Uh, the other thing is, of course, um, 
this is a static scene. We would like to do dynamic things. We're looking at online algorithms that deal with textures or objects arriving in the scene and disappearing. Um, how, how do you handle that? We probably have to look at uh, energy com consumption per unit of time rather than total. So it's a good place to stop. So for the uh, example images that you had shown, um, when you're doing this 3D stuff, right, there's sort of two parties, right? The vertices that are being used and then the textures that map on them. Yes. Um, what percentage for like that um, picture that you had were textures versus um, the vertices? And then, right, because obviously this dovetails into some of the progressive mesh streaming yeah, sure. stuff. Yeah. And I was just curious you know, um, with the contribution. I wish my student was here to answer that. I, I think it probably, it would be at least a factor of 10 difference. Um, what I showed actually were screenshots. They were not, th you can't really show 3D images in the paper on the screen. So these were actually screenshots of an Android simulator. Um, on the device, they were actually 3D. And, and I think it was about a factor of 10 difference. Okay, any more questions? Uh, I'm Rufal from CWI. Thank you for your presentation. I had a question on your experimental setup. You mentioned uh, progressive uh, streaming. Yes. Uh, what do you exactly mean by that and how is it done? Uh, what I mean is that the textures are rendered as you're streaming them, as you're receiving them. So um, at the very beginning I showed the uh, three screenshots and, and what was happening was that uh, we were st as we were streaming the device was actually rendering them and displaying them. That's what I meant by progressive. Okay, thank you. Last question. Yeah, hi, Dick from uh, CWI as well. Um, I'm trying to understand what actually, what you've done in from the game and the user uh, perspective. I understand that this is a preliminary study and that, it, that there are a lot of framework issues here. But I would think that a lot of these things could be pre-computed so that from a compression point of view, there are a limited number of textures, and and uh, so there seems to be a lot of work going on here that I would think would that you could optimize uh, substantially. We, we could, of course. Okay. Yeah, and and I mean, you would pre-compute the textures. Uh, in the initial slide, we had a 3D database. Right. So we would think we would uh, pre-compute them, maybe use mipmaps or something like that to do that. But I would think that the real issue here is a game design issue, and you know, you st you started out by saying that there's this prioritization: things that are more important in the game get a higher weight, and things that are closer than than things that are further away. And actually, I don't see those influences too much in in what no. what you were talking about here, and that's that seems to be the the crux of of um, uh, the story. But I, I I lost a little bit of where that fit into okay. the uh, to the actual system. Um, our, our goal is to do this online. And, and this was just to see whether it was worth doing. So w our, our real goal is to do the online where things come into the scene and leave. And, and we have to make decisions about what we want. Also, uh, you might have storage constraints. Huh. And do you throw a texture out and then restream it later? Or do you downsample it on the device? There are lots of issues here. So th these are the things we want to look at. But I would think that at some point the whole texture issue goes away because it's the game logic that's important and whether the the wall that you're next to has 17,000 bricks or is just a blue wall or a brown or I guess a red wall for bricks right is is that you know <coughs> does that really I mean are you doing a lot of work to solve a problem that is actually really inc incidental to playing the game um, where you could get rid of the textures and just do planar color fields or do gradient I color guess. fields and get the same Im impact. Sure. Well, it right. might. I, I, would, uh, I would think that users might like better quality games. I mean, this seems to be the thrust in the industry, but... W uh, yeah. yeah, sure. Okay. Okay, thanks. <laughs>